So my last video I did, I showed you my cholesterol and um, my fasting insulin results for my blood test. Now, a lot of you, well, the majority of people believe that cholesterol is bad and it needs to be banned. <laughs> um, I used to kind of believe that myself. I used to believe the cholesterol was bad and the lower the better. Well, my thoughts on that and my beliefs have completely changed. Um, everything that I've uh, read about, watched, uh, other doc doctors speak about cholesterol. Um, I believe that in the past 40 years or so, we've been fed uh, just lies about cholesterol. Just to sell their statin drugs, uh, the big pharma. Cholesterol is an absolute essential thing in our body, okay? It, we have to have it or we will die, okay, without it. I'm going to show you a few um, clips, short clips, from Dr. Paul Saladino, Dr. Um, Ovedia, which is a, he's a thoracic uh, surgeon, cardiac surgeon, and um, Dr. Anthony Chafee, he's a neurologist. They're going to talk about what the exact function of cholesterol is, the lies that we've been fed over the years, and basically we are not to fear cholesterol, but what we need to fear is another substance that if eaten with cholesterol, like meat, um, will cause damage. So here's Paul Saladino on what exactly LDL cholesterol does in the body and how absolutely important it is for us to have and maintain um, an optimal level. So LDL cholesterol is low density lipoprotein. It's a balloon, it's a, it's a spherical molecule in your body that has a single lipid monolayer and it carries cholesterol and triglycerides. It's essentially like a bus that moves from your liver, the bus station, to other tissues of your body and supplies them with building blocks. So now we've already seen that the LDL has a functional positive role in the human body. Those building blocks being cholesterol and triglycerides. Cholesterol, yes, is a valuable nutrient in your body. It's the backbone of your steroid hormones. So mm. all progesterone, estrogen, pregnenolone, uh, testosterone is built from a cholesterol backbone. Is it a steroid backbone? It travels on an LDL bus to tissues of your body. Now there's buses that go back an LDL can go back, or HDL buses can usually go back to the liver. This is obviously an oversimplification. There's lots of buses that move around your body on bus routes. And so the LDL is carrying passengers. They get off at certain stops. Other passengers can get on and move back to the liver, generally speaking. Now, in, in, in the LDL particle, there are these other molecules, triglycerides and cholesterol. But we think of cholesterol is a misnomer because cholesterol is the steroid molecule, but LDL is a type of cholesterol. But LDL is not cholesterol in any way, shape, or form. It's just a bus that carries a cholesterol molecule. So LDL canonically has been thought of as bad, but let's reframe it. Let's just back up and think, um, why would a molecule that is essential for human life be bad for us? It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Um, and we know there are genetic syndromes where you don't make enough cholesterol because of en enzymatic genetic defects in the cholesterol synthesis pathway. The liver makes a lot of cholesterol. You eat cholesterol and the liver makes cholesterol and the liver exports it on the bus to other parts of the body. But there's a condition called smith lemley oppitt syndrome where one of the enzymes in the synthesis of cholesterol in the body is broken and you don't make a lot of cholesterol. These kids have depression, they have sleep issues, a lot of them die in utero, and they have massive susceptibility to infections, and they're given egg yolks as a therapy for their disease. So they're mm. given basically a bag of cholesterol, which is an egg yolk, to treat their disease. Mm. We know that in animal models, if you deplete an animal, a rat or a mice, uh, a mouse of cholesterol, of LDL cholesterol, they're more susceptible to infections. If you give a rat or a mouse more LDL cholesterol, they have more resilience to infectious insults. We know that in humans, and this has been studied at many different levels, those humans with higher levels of LDL tend to uh, resist infections and have less hospital admissions. And in the elderly, in elderly cohorts, 75 and above, I believe, those with the highest levels of LDL live the longest and have the most longevity. So there's a real conundrum here in our minds when 
99% perhaps of doctors would tell you that LDL is bad. How can this be? So as you can see, LDL cholesterol is extremely important for all the functions of the body. All the trans it transports other triglycerides and cholesterol into other various parts of the body for it to function properly. Without this, we can't have good hormones, testosterone, and all you know, just a whole array of uh, hormones that our body needs to function. Um, let me show you. Uh, Dr. Ovedia's and his view on what happened um, with our our system. We've been fed a bunch of lies basically throughout the years and uh, they focused on cholesterol which they should have been focusing on something else. How we were led to believe that LDL cholesterol was the end-all and be-all when it comes to heart disease. Um, you know, early 1900s here in the United States, heart disease is essentially undescribed. It's a rare disease. Leading physicians of the time would go their entire careers without seeing cases of, of atherosclerotic heart disease, plaque buildup in the arteries that ultimately leads to reduced blood flow in the arteries on the heart. Uh, and that's, you know, one of the things that leads to heart attacks. So fast forward, early 1900s, heart disease incidence starts to rise. We get to 1950s, and now we have what's considered to be an epidemic of heart disease. Dramatic increases in the incidence of heart disease. The president of the United States, Dwight Eisenhower, has a heart attack while in office, 1955, and this appropriately sets off the alarm bells. And the leading scientist of the time, had two competing theories about what the primary driver of this increased heart disease was. One theory was that it was dietary cholesterol and saturated fat in the diet that was leading to a buildup of cholesterol in the bloodstream, which then became a buildup of cholesterol-based plaques in the arteries of the heart. The other theory of the time was that sugar in the diet was uh, causing heart disease. The way that that works is that high levels of sugar in the bloodstream is damaging to the blood vessel walls, causes damage to the lining of the blood vessel walls, and that was thought to be a contributor to heart disease. For various reasons, uh, most of them not scientific, the cholesterol theory won out. What was called the diet heart hypothesis became the prevailing theory about what was causing heart disease. And this then led us down a couple of pathways. One pathway was ultimately led to the US Dietary Guidelines. 1980, uh, the first version of the US Dietary Guidelines was released. And the basic premise of the US Dietary Guidelines is that we need to minimize fat in the diet in general, saturated fat and cholesterol in particular, and that was going to help us with the problem of heart disease. The other thing that came out of this theory was development of medications to lower cholesterol levels. Statin medications became the most widely prescribed class of medications uh, starting in about the 1990s. So here we are 30, 40 years later, we've been under this prevailing theory that cholesterol, dietary cholesterol, dietary saturated fat is the primary driver of heart disease. We've lowered our consumption of saturated fat and cholesterol. We've increasingly used medications to lower our LDL cholesterol levels. And despite that, heart disease remains the number one killer in the United States. And in fact, the incidence of heart disease um, has worsened over the past 10 years. And when you zoom back out, uh, you know, we had a small decrease from about 1985 to about 2000. And then the rate has started to go up again. And most of that decrease in retrospect is probably attributed to decrease in smoking rates. We now know smoking is a major contributor to the development of heart disease as well as these dietary factors. Uh, but ultimately, you know, the cholesterol hypothesis, the diet heart, heart hypothesis is not leaning to a meaningful reduction in the incidence of heart disease. And that's why I believe we need to step back and question 
whether it was the right hypothesis in the first place. Now, I want you to see how messed up this is. This is the American Journal of Medicine. Here it says, uh, James Herrick, uh, in 1912, was the first to diagnose heart attacks during life. And six years later, he encouraged the use of the electrical, electrocardiogram to diagnose myocardial infraction. Okay, so he was the first to recognize it. It was completely rare. Down here at the bottom, where it's uh, the last uh, part here on the bottom, it says, given that coronary heart disease is a complex multifractional pro process, it is unlikely that there is a single explanation for the decline of coronary heart disease death in the U.S. over the past 50 years. Are you serious? A decline in coronary heart disease in the past 50 years? What, what world are they living in? We went from almost no heart attacks in the early 1900s to today, the number one killer. Where is the decline in that? So in this chart here, you see heart disease at the top is the number one killer. Over 700,000 people die in the United States um, because of heart disease. So we went from almost no heart disease in the early 1900s when people were eating lard and fat and a mostly meat-based diet to now the number one killer, what? And we've decreased our fat and, and lard and, and butter intake, just like uh, the mainstream tells us to. And it has increased. And now here's Dr. Chafee explaining what really is going on and how everything has been falsified. Uh, but I think it comes down to the simple fact that the original studies that showed a correlation but never causation between cholesterol and heart disease and the 1977 USDA recommendations to eat less cal uh, um, fat and cholesterol uh, were not only false but fraudulent. Okay, These were bought and paid for by the sugar industry through the, something called the Sugar Research Foundation that's now called the Sugar Association. Okay, so you know that that's not that's not uh, up for debate. You know that that's a matter of record. Okay, this is this is a an actual historical event that happened that we have clear documentation of. So, cholesterol was never a problem. Okay, it was never a marker of disease. It was never a cause of heart disease. Okay, that, that's really end of story in my book because this was all predicated on false information. Okay, so. Heart disease is an inflammatory process driven by, among other things, hyperglycemia, hyperinsulinemia, insulin resistant, peripheral insulin resistance, glycosylation and oxidation of SDLDL um, and, and other LDL products by carbohydrates and sugar. Fructose in particular, this was shown by Dr. Robert Lustig of UCSF, who if anyone's watched my, my videos on sugar and so forth, he, I'm a big fan of his. He's done extremely good work on, on this subject and others. So he and the biochemistry department at uh, UC San Francisco um, you know, published clear information about how fructose works in the body and how this causes disease. Okay? He has multiple publications since 2009 when that originally came out. So all the arguments against cholesterol are predicated on this false premise that there was a correlation between uh, uh, cholesterol and heart disease, which, which there never was. Okay. And so like anything based on a false premise, you have to throw it out and start it again. Okay. Okay. So how do we know all this? Okay. Well, first of all, there is no high level evidence showing even a correlation between cholesterol and heart disease. Okay. There was never any high level evidence. Okay. Um, more than that, uh, the Journal of American Medical Association published a report in 2015 from the UCSF showing internal documentation from the Sugar Research Foundation talking about how there was evidence and a ton of evidence in the literature going back to the 40s and 50s suggesting that sugar caused heart disease. And in their own words, in their own documentation, detailing how they paid off three Harvard professors to falsify data and publish fraudulent studies to make it appear as if cholesterol was causing heart disease, or is at least correlated with heart disease, and exonerating sugar, even though sugar was the problem. They call this an empty calorie, okay? So that's where that phrase comes from, okay? Um, it was one of, the, one of these professors, Professor Mark, who uh, was made head of the USDA after this. And he helped shape and author the 1977 USDA dietary recommendations to significantly reduce saturated fats and cholesterol because it 
caused heart disease okay and this changed the world all right so in america we actually listen you know people say you know well, oh well, people just don't listen to doctors they just eat too much fat no the problem is, is that they did listen to doctors and they stopped eating fat and they started eating more fruits and vegetables and sugar and grains and so forth because they're just empty calories right no, they actually cause a significant amount of harm. You know, I mean, cocaine doesn't have any calories at all. You know, so it's just that's just a freebie. Just do as much as you want. You know, obviously that's not the case. You know, there are there are things besides calories that affect your body. Okay, so just in America, after the 1977 proclamation that cholesterol caused heart disease and we should stop eating that and saturated fat, uh, the American population, hundreds of millions of people, reduced our fat and cholesterol cholesterol intake by 30% and reduce red meat by 33% because of course red meat has a lot of fat and cholesterol so of course that's the worst right well actually it's the best and we increased our fruits and vegetables by 30 and 40 percent respectively increased grains and sugars as well and what happened what were the results of this okay well first of all heart disease rates tripled okay and all countries that follow these dietary practices found the same results and also obesity and heart disease di you know diabetes stroke Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, autism, all these things all increased exponentially, you know, um, as well as um, autoimmune diseases. Okay, so all these things all increased at the exact same time, but, you know, important to this, this topic, heart disease rates triple. Okay, so you can't say that cholesterol causes heart disease if you reduce cholesterol and heart disease rates increase. If anything, you say that's protective, and in fact, that's what we're actually seeing in the literature. So you can see that throughout the years, um, all these studies and everything, they've, they've been falsified, uh, been paid off by the sugar companies to make uh, cholesterol the culprit, which in, the tru in truth is that high carbohydrates, grains, cereals, um, sugary, you know, anything sugary, starchy, um, vegetables, um, all that stuff um, contribute to high sugar and high insulin in the blood. When you have high sugar in the blood all the time, that causes damage to the, the uh, arterial wall. So cholesterol's job then is to patch up that damage until it heals. But if you're constantly eating sugar, like the majority of us are, well I was, addicted to sugar, you're constantly damaging your, your artery walls, your blood sugar is constantly high, the cholesterol is trying to fix it constantly, right? Because you're constantly eating sugar and sugary stuff. Grains is also sugar, okay? Anything, oats, grains, all that stuff, it's garbage. You're constantly creating your, uh, your, sugar, your blood sugar to spike up, damaging your arterial walls. Cholesterol then has to stick to it to try to patch it up, and eventually it will patch it up and heal, and that, that clot, that sticking, that, that cholesterol that's stuck there will eventually go away. But if you're constantly feeding, feeding your mouth with sugar and, and uh, carbs and, and all that stuff, the, cl the cholesterol has to constantly patch, constantly patch, and it builds up, builds up, builds up, until the point where you have a, an artery that's almost closed up completely, and sealed and you get a heart attack or a stroke. That is the culprit. That is the true culprit of all this cardiovascular disease that's been going on. It's the high sugar diets. Back in the 1800s, early 1900s, the people didn't go out and just, oh, go to Walmart and get whatever they wanted. That didn't exist. They had just general stores and stuff like that. And the majority of the people back then ate more of a meat-based diet. And in that meat-based diet, they, had, they used a lot of lard and butter, okay? None of the seed oil crap or any of that stuff. And they didn't have tons and tons of pastries. In fact, I think back then, back in the late 1800s, early 1900s, people... I think it was like five pounds of sugar a year that they would eat, max. Today it's an epidemic. I mean, you get that in just a few packs of soda. I, it's ridiculous, you know, how much sugar people are consuming in those energy drinks and everything. It is absolutely ridiculous, and it's destroying everybody's health. And um, 
it really needs to stop. If you really want to take care of your health, stop shoving your face with all these grains, starchy vegetables, um, sugary stuff, uh, all this super processed foods full of chemicals on top of that. On top of being, on top of being just uh, processed, is there's a bunch of chemicals in there. This stuff is going to kill us if we don't stop. So, guys, I just want to let you know that I personally am not worried about cholesterol. I think it's a bunch of BS that what the what the mainstream is telling us about cholesterol, and um, you shouldn't worry about it as long as you're not eating sugar, and the grains and the starchy vegetables. You have to keep your blood sugars down. That is the key to this whole thing, is keep your blood sugar normal, and you will avoid all the mess that's going on right now, because heart disease is the number one killer here in the US and around the world. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next one.